that video, my gosh, quite, mo quite moving to watch. If you've been, if you're like myself, I'm a pastor's kid, I've grown, I actually realized this week I've grown up in the X movement, like literally. I am 40 in January, can you believe it? Um, and I've spent 37 of those years in the X movement, and my family uh, uh, joined, uh, got born again, my parents got born again in this movement when I was about three years old, three or four. Um, and I've literally grown up in this movement, and I think about um, X conference and spaces like this, and it hasn't always been in the Bruce Mason Center, but even just this room and coming back in here this week and remembering just moments that I've had with God in this space. Um, sometimes that's been in a tough transition season. Sometimes it's been when I've been walking through some things personally myself, and I just think about the, the moments that I've had with God in this space, and I thank God for that. I thank God for our movement. I thank God for the, the consistency and the faithfulness of this movement and, and what it's, um, the fruit that it's yielded in my life. And I also, I feel emotional as I watched that video this morning, just thinking about the people in the room that have obviously gone before and have really forged a way for us, I say us younger ones, and here I am approaching 40, but... Um, my generation and younger that are coming through. And I just, I thank God for, for the fact that you've continued to keep your heart right. I have been probably in ministry for a good 20 so years now. And I, I realize that life, leadership, ministry, whether you're in a family, a church, an, a different organization, a, um, a movement, there's a lot of reasons to get offended. <laughs> there's a lot of people that we have to rub up against at times, and there's a lot of situations that we've got to continue to process in our hearts so that we can stay free, so that we can continue to do what we're doing. And I thank God for you all in this room today that you have continued to do that. For those who have done ministry for many more years than me, you've done it for 25, 30, 40 years or more. I thank God for you. I thank God for your example, that you have continued to keep your heart right, and you've continued to just process that before God so that you can be an example to me, but to others coming behind us. Um, for my own children, I love that they have that example in this movement. So I thank God for this space. Can you help me honor all the pastors who have been serving God faithfully for many, many years? Very cool. Well, my name's Hannah. Um, I'm married to the, the guy who was service leading this morning. He said I had to give him a shout out. There's a little shout out. Um, we're, the, <laughs> we're currently pastoring in Wellington um, at Equippers in Nauranga. And God has just um, been doing some really cool things there in our church family. And um, yeah, again, just want to thank you all just for, I know there's been a lot of churches and the movement who have really rallied around this year, seeing us uh, move into a new building and a new space there. And it's significant what God is doing, and it's just the beginning. So very excited for all that's to come. But um, so I am a pastor's kid. I've grown up in church. I'm a church kid through and through. And I, I thank God for this just opportunity this morning just to share with you. And I'll, I'll do me today. I'm not banning. I'm not Takbana or Pastor Sam. But I'll just share and um, share hopefully oh, something that will minister and bless you this morning. I... The, the thing that I really pray, and I often pray with, whether I'm service leading or sitting with someone one-on-one -on -one or about to preach a word, is I'll ask God, God, what is it that you're doing right now? And how can I, or we as the people of God, get on board with that? Um, and I love hearing the heart of God, and I love sharing that with other people, what I sense that God's doing. And so I'm going to do that this morning. I also love to, to feel and to, to ask God, what is it that is the felt need right now? amongst uh, particularly the people of God, but even in our communities and even in the nation that we're reaching, even in our world, what is the felt need? And then, God, how are we going to marry those things together? What it is that you're doing? What it is that's the felt need? And God, help me get on board with that. I don't want to do anything else other than that. What it is that you're doing, God, on earth right now? And I pray that this morning, the word that I bring just helps you to frame the season that you're about to go into. But I also believe it's going to help frame the season that you've just come out of. And I kind of sense, like, it's a little bit frustrating sometimes. You're sitting, like, listening to the other words that are coming through Acts Conference and you're like, oh my gosh, they're preaching my word. Do I need to go back to square one? And I, I honestly feel that this word this morning is just an exclamation mark to all that has already been said. And I feel like God's just going to allow it to land in another way in your life. So we're going to pray and then we're going to get into it. Thank you, Jesus. God, I thank you, Lord, for the, 
the, the honor that it is, Lord, just to come and to worship you, to be together, God, as your people, to worship you this morning, and then in this moment, to open our hearts, to hear from you, to hear your word. So God, I pray for the soil of our hearts, Lord, to be soft this morning. God, that we will be ready, Lord, to hear your word, that it will land in our hearts, that it won't just be something that goes through our mind and to our head that we grapple with, but that it will land in our spirits. God, I believe that people are going to leave this place today, God, with a new excitement, not just surviving and holding on to the season that they're in, but actually an excitement and a drive, a good drive, a drive given by you, God, Lord, for the season ahead. God, a passion, like the wind behind them, that they're no longer going to be walking into the wind and, and facing it and um, pushing through every obstacle, but it's going to be the wind behind them. And I believe that in Jesus' name. So we open our hearts. We're ready for your word. We thank you, God, that you're here in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so the word that I want to preach this morning is titled um, Rooftops in Revelation. And I, I was reading a passage of scripture a couple of weeks ago, probably about a month ago, uh, uh, from uh, Acts, and it's about Peter, Acts 10, and we'll get to that soon. But I, we were talking about transitions, and we were doing a bit of a series in our church, and just really sensing that God is transitioning the church right now. He's transitioning people, and just helping people to make sense of that, and what it is that God's doing in their lives. I think we're always transitioning. It doesn't transition for us as pastors and leaders has a very scary vibe to it, uh, but we're always transitioning, whether it's from our kids being in their primary school years into their teenage years. That's a transition and these things to let go of and new things to embrace. And so we're just talking about this with our church family. And um, I really felt this, this word from Acts 10, this chapter, just sat with me. And when Sam reached out and asked if I would share this morning, I just could not get away from the fact that I needed to share from this passage. So I've just prayed, I've asked God to, to break it down a little bit for me, and we're going to go there today. But I, um, firstly, before we do, I, just this idea of rooftops. In the Bible, or actually I have to preface to all the international guests that I am a fast-talking Kiwi, as you've already realized, so I'm very sorry. And to Rebecca over there who is signing, you're doing a wonderful job. And I will try and slow my pace at times for you. <laughs> Thank you, I know, we've talked about this. <laughs> so good. Um, so rooftops, back in the Holy Land or in the Holy Land, and through Bible times, Old Testament and New, Rooftops, every house in the Holy Land had a, had a rooftop, had an open air space, not just the roofs as we know it, we, you never live up there really, you're never on the rooftop, or well, hopefully you're not, um, but in the Holy Land there were rooftops that were open air spaces, and these were places that whether you were rich or poor, no matter how much you had, this was a space that you would go to retreat, to reflect, to ponder, but also to pray. And so you see actually in the Old Testament, Daniel, when he was um, not supposed to be praying to his God, and he is, he's actually on the rooftop in that moment praying. So this was quite a, a common occurrence, was to have a rooftop that you would go to to pray. And I love the picture of this. I love the change of perspective, the getting to a higher view um, to get God's perspective, to retreat and to pray. And I think about that in terms of... Um, just everyday life, and you think about a household and just how busy it can be, and the comings and goings, the things we have to do, the responsibilities we carry, and then the ability to step out of that and to go higher and to go to the rooftop to pray and to spend time with God in that space, and that He would um, He would minister to you, that you would get revelation in that place. I love that picture, and this is where I'm going this morning, and I want you to hold on to that and remember that as we dive into the passage this morning. Can I ask my little um, assistant to bring me some water? That would be wonderful. <laughs> he's not little, he said. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you're not my assistant. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> wow. You see what I have to put up with? You know this, though. It's no surprises. <laughs> so we're going to go to Acts 10, and it's going to come up on the screen behind me. But just some context first. So I know I'm preaching to pastors and leaders, and sometimes I have to laugh at the words God gives me. I'm like, God, this is obvious. Like, I'm talking to pastors and leaders today. But this passage of Scripture, the context here is that up until this point, the believing church was only for the Jews. No Gentiles up until this point, okay? So only the Jews. Yet God had always had the ultimate plan 
of all nations and people worshiping and serving him. So God in this moment, he's getting ready to make this big significant uh, change in terms of kingdom citizenship. So this is a like pivotal passage of scripture in the Bible. I hope you know how weighty this passage of scripture is. The fact that you and I have salvation today, the fact that we have heard the gospel is because of this moment that happened in Acts 10. Um, And we don't have time to read the whole chapter, but at the start of this chapter, first it talks about this man called Cornelius. Now he's a Gentile, and he's a God-fearing man, and um, he was devoted to prayer, and he had really captured the heart of God. So God turns up to him in this moment, and he he gives him a vision, and he says to him, I want you to send some men to Joppa, and there's going to be a man there, and I want you to tell him to come and to stay with us and to be in our home, which was something that a Jewish man was not able to do, to stay in the home of a Gentile. So we pick up this story here in Acts 10, 9 to 23, and it's titled in my Bible, which is um, the New King James, it says, uh, Peter's Vision. And it says this, the next day as they were on their journey, so these men that Cornelius had sent, and they're approaching the city, Peter went up on the housetop. So there it is, as it was custom to do, and he's not in his own home here, okay? You've got to remember, he's staying with someone because he's been traveling through. He's staying with a tanner, and he's staying in his house here. As it was custom to do, he went up onto the rooftop to pray, at the sixth hour to pray. And he became hungry, and he wanted something to eat. But while they were preparing it, he fell into a trance, and he saw the heavens opened, and something like a great sheet descending, being let down by its four corners upon the earth. In it were all kinds of animals and reptiles and birds of the air. And there came a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, by no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice came to him again a second time, what God has made clean, do not call common. And this happened three times. And the thing was taken up all at once to heaven. Now, if you know this passage of Scripture, you know that then um, God's not challenging Peter in terms of his diet and a change of diet. That wasn't the huge, like, history-making moment that was happening in that moment. We know that it's a lot more than that. But in this moment, as God's showing Peter this vision, what he's saying is that Peter and the other believers would need to let go of their own rituals and rules and the ways they had always done it to embrace new ground for the harvest. Now, this is what I believe God's doing right now. He's calling us as a church to let go of some of our rituals and rules in the ways we have always done it to embrace new ground for the harvest. And yes, even as Pentecostal pastors and leaders, we have our rituals and our rules and the ways that we have always done it. But God's causing us in this season, and I believe this is what he's doing right now, is he wants us to lay those things down and be willing to lay them down to pick up what it is that he's wanting to do and to embrace something new for the harvest that he wants to bring in. So Peter wasn't ready for this, because we know God always gives these visions in moments when we're not ready for it. It's always when we're, we're tired, or it's not just not the right day for it, or we're on a mission, we're going through the motions. Peter's not ready for this, but change happens whether we want it or not. So a very long story short is Peter, he grapples with this vision. About three times God has to tell him, again, what's happening. Um, so he's grappling with it on the rooftop in prayer. And I actually believe that's a key. There's people in this room today, you're grappling some things. And there's some big questions you're asking of God right now, but you're not grappling it in prayer. You're not getting on that rooftop and you're not going before God. You you may be grappling it in conversation and unhelpful places. You may be grappling it by following a lot of content that just uh, feeds what it is that, that you desire and you want. But God's saying, are we willing to grapple with the things that he's showing us or the things that we're feeling? Are we willing to grapple that in prayer? And then are we going to train a generation and teach a generation to grapple things in prayer? We've got a generation right now asking a lot of questions. Are we going to point them to the rooftop and say, yeah, it's cool that you're grappling with it. That's actually a good thing. But are you going to grapple that in prayer? Let's keep pointing them towards that, because I believe God's going to birth something new. Some of us are frustrated with the next generation coming through because they've got so many questions, but don't be frustrated by it. Like, point them to prayer and say, go and pray, because I believe God's going to birth something new from that place. Amen. Am I talking too fast, Pastor Jacob? (laughs) Thank you. (sighs) I'll slow my pace for you every now and then. (laughs) So this 
long story short, Peter, he grapples with this vision, and he goes to be with Cornelius, his household, and all of Cornelius' friends. And Peter, he preaches the first Christian sermon presented to the Gentiles. You know, we read these scriptures, like I say, and we just bounce over them, but my gosh, what a weighty moment in church history. Like, history was made in that moment where Peter went, and he was not prepared for this moment, yet God turned up to him, gave him this vision, and he went. He was obedient to it, and a whole household got saved. But then following on from that, here we are now with the gospel being extended right across the earth to all people. Amen. And that's you and me included. So within a short period of time, Peter goes from a confused person on a rooftop, trying to make sense of this random, out-of-the-box vision, to a preacher ready to break new ground. And I feel I've, I've skimmed over a weighty piece of scripture, as I keep saying, but as I've sat with this and I've prayed it through in recent weeks, I just know that this is a word for now, and I knew I, I needed to share this today. And this is what I feel, that God wants us meeting with him on the rooftop, and not not in a week's time, not in a couple of months' time, where we finally catch up with it then that God's doing something new, but he wants us meeting with him on the rooftop now. Like there's a now thing with this that we've actually got to lean into him now. The other thing I feel is that he wants to reveal some kingdom territory-taking revelation to us now. That this is going to be another time in history that we're going to look back and see that God did something new, that he did something significant And this is where I feel that it's going to help just frame the past season for you and maybe to reconcile some things for you of what you've walked through. But, you know, during the COVID onslaught, which we've talked a bit bit about this week, and we've all been in it, all our international pastors, um, all of us here in New Zealand, and in different ways we've had to face COVID and it's meant different things. But during COVID, uh, I'm not sure if this was the same internationally, but here in New Zealand, we heard a lot about the word um, pivot and needing to pivot. Um, And it was overused, so everyone got sick of hearing that word. But I believe that then, during the pandemic, wasn't the pivotal time. I believe that was the disruption. That was the disruption in the world. But this is now the pivot time. The pivot in the church wasn't going digital and going online like we might have thought it was. That was the disruption. God was disrupting us. And this is the pivot time. This is the time that we get a hold of what it is, what it is that God is doing and how do we get on board with that. God disrupted some things and he, he kind of, I just feel like he disrupted the soil even in the church because he wants to birth some new things. He wants to bring forth a new harvest This is the pivot time. God isn't looking to pivot our methods, but I believe he is redefining the boundaries of the harvest. So we don't seek God for new methods. You know, it's probably the the rebellion in me, there is a little bit, um, that when people say to me, oh, I love that new creative idea you had, Hannah. Oh, like something in me resists it and I want to stop doing the thing because I, I don't want to do the next cool creative thing. Like I want, to, I want to know what it is that God's doing and I want to get on board with that. I want to know what is the felt need. What is it that people are walking through? What do they need? And I want to, I want to meet that on behalf of God. I want to be a, a vessel to be able to meet those needs. I don't want to do the next cool creative thing. So God's not wanting to pivot our methods and just adjust and tweak and make sure we're doing something new, cool and creative. But God actually wants to like redefine the boundaries of the harvest. He wants to disrupt something in us, the ways we have always done things because he wants to birth something new. I'll slow down. (laughs) Within a short period of time, Peter goes from a confused person and he makes sense of this vision that God's given him. Get this, until this moment, Until God dropped the revelation to Peter on that rooftop, there was nothing to bridge the distance between Peter and the current church that he was operating with and the harvest, the harvest that was to come. There was nothing to bridge that gap. It's the revelation, the vision that God gave him. It was what God was wanting to do that bridged that gap. This is not a get on the rooftop and pray and get new methods of ministry kind of word. It's not about him unlocking new methods. It's about, he's about to unlock new territory. 
Are we willing for it? Like, are we willing? Are we ready? Are we eager? Are we desperate? Are we, like, seeking him this week? Like, God, what is it that you're doing, and how can I get on board with that? This is a pivotal time in church history. I know it, and I know you sense it as well. You can feel like things have been shifting, and it's actually quite disturbing sometimes as a leader because it's really hard when the ways that you've always done things are kind of feeling a little bit disrupted. It's, it's hard, and actually sometimes it makes you want to give up. You know, I've had a really awesome year, and God's been doing some really cool things, and in light of your life and looking at it ministry-wise, you think, that's like a peak, like that's a high moment, yet there's been moments this year I've been like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore, this is so much, God, like this is too much, but I believe it's because God is just turning the soil in the church, and he's doing something new, and this is not a time to jump out. I don't believe that this is a time to quit. I don't believe that it is a time to quit. I believe that there's, like, we're feeling things because God is turning the soil in the church, and this is not a time to quit. And I sensed as I prayed this morning, I felt to say, this is not a time to quit. If you're considering it, it's not a time to quit. God is doing something new. That's why you feel disturbed and disrupted. God is doing something new. I also felt as I prayed this morning, and I'm jumping ahead of myself as I do, but I prayed and I said, I felt it's not a time to quit. But I also felt like it's a time for some of you in the room, it's a time to unquit. Some of you quit maybe a few years ago or recently or 20 years ago, and God's saying it's a time to unquit. It's a time to get back into it and to know what your assignment is for this season, to know what it is that God is doing and to get on board with that. So the means of releasing a new wave of ministry is not inside of us yet. And that's actually a freeing thought, that it's not inside of us yet. So when we feel lacking, that's a good thing. It's not inside of us yet. But we should spend time with God to find out what is in Him and then ask Him to put it in us so that we would carry it. And then like that word that Banning gave us, that's the next step of how to carry that revelation and that word that He gives us. But we actually need to get with God. We need to be on the rooftop and we need to be seeking Him. I believe that there's a boundary that the church has no ability to get past, and the bridge isn't a style or a model. What if it's none of those things? What if God is reforming and redefining the rules? And defying, sorry, the rules. Are we on the rooftop seeking him to have the hidden things revealed? Banning, he kept referring to it as a prophetic move of God. And I believe that's what God's doing. And it's going to be a prophetic move of God. And that means God's going to share. He's going to, he's going to drop that revelation into people's hearts. And are we open? Are we those ones that are like, yeah, God, we're ready. Like, use me. God, yeah, I'm tired. But use me, God. I want to be a part of what it is that you're about to do on the earth. I don't want the next cool, creative, new method. I want Holy Spirit-inspired revelation. Because that lands different. It lands different in my life. There's a new energy around that when it's Holy Spirit-inspired revelation. There's, it's easier to get people on board with that when there's a Holy Spirit-inspired revelation. Like, honestly, the energy for it, what you need right now is more revelation. You crave a holiday, and yes, that's good. And sitting in a counseling office, I'm a huge advocate for it. Maybe you're feeling like you need to give up and you've been uh, fantasizing about your dream job, what you do if you're not doing this. I know what it's like. But that's not what you need right now. You need fresh revelation. It's going to carry you through the next season. And I feel, I feel like if we don't grab a hold of this revelation, that some of us will not be in this come January. Even in this last part of this year, we'll, we'll be so weary and tired that, that we'll be out. And that's, that's the, the plan of the enemy, and that's what he wants. But I want to encourage you today, don't quit. And I feel that this is a word in season for people. Don't quit. This is not a time to quit. You need to push on through because God is doing something new. I believe in, uh, between now until the end of the year that God is going to firstly, before a new wave of harvest, I really feel between now and the end of the year that God's going to bring back those who have been scattered 
those that have um, distanced themselves from God or from community, I believe God's going to bring those back. And so you need to pray there and you need to believe for that. And it's going to be with it a new wave of leaders because we're going to need them. So God's going to mobilize a whole new wave of leaders. And then I believe into 2023, it's going to be a whole new wave of harvest, a harvest of souls into next year. And I know um, Shane Willard has also spoken that. And so we've got to prepare. We've got to be on the rooftop praying. Like we're not, we're not church managers that are managing another organization or trust. Like that's not who we are. We've got to do that and we've got to be diligent there. But we're not managing a trust. We're not event coordinators, although it feels like that sometimes. That we're event coordinating Sunday services. We get through another Sunday. <sighs> okay, now we just catch our breath until next Sunday. We're not event coordinators. We are shepherds. We are leaders that God has placed in this nation, in your nation, in your city. And we have a responsibility to be hearing from God. If we're not, like, what are we doing? Like, why are we doing this if we're not hearing from God for the people that we're ministering to and the people that we are leading? We have to know. We have to know what God is doing. And we've got to be getting on board with that. I am back in 2015, and this is not what I'm talking about um, today. I won't drop into the story fully, but I, um, I know how easy it is to end up in a place of going through the motions um, and just to briefly mention it, back in 2015, I burnt out, and I burnt out in a pretty sucky way that the next day after I'm sitting with a Christian psychologist, the next morning I'm in an office with Pastor Bruce, Pastor Sam, my husband, pretty intimidating place to be <laughs> when you're not traveling well, um, and then was encouraged to take six months out and just stop all that I was doing, and I was serving here in Auckland at that point, and multifaceted for why I'd ended up where I had, and um, was my own self and not processing leadership and life well. But one of the big things and learnings that I took from that season, I'm not sharing that story in fullness today, but the, a really big thing that I took from that season for me, as a church kid, as a pastor's kid who's grown up in church, was just God really challenged in me just religion and my religious ways and where I was going through the motions of ministry and life and leadership and just life with God. And that was the most confronting thing for me. Out of all the things I had to face up to was the fact that I'd been going through the motions in just so many aspects and coming back to God about it was all about. And it was really a forced pause to address the issues in my own heart. And unfortunately, I see a lot of people, they, they hit similar situations and it's very easy to point outward and point at this person and that organization or whatever. But honestly, I only believe the reason I'm standing here today is the fact that I was able to, and with great support and help, to actually look inward and address some of the issues in my own heart and actually take those to God and be really emotionally honest before Him and work it through. I honestly believe that's why I'm still going in ministry, the reason that I'm still able to, to keep serving God. And I encourage you today that, like God wants, and He's probably even this week, He's touched on areas in your heart and in your life where you know you're going through the motions. And that's, that's honestly the biggest discrepancy in our lives as leaders, I believe, is when we're going through the motions, but we're not seeking God in prayer, where we're not got fresh revelation, where we don't know what it is that God's doing right now. And honestly, it just, it depletes us like nothing else. And so I want to encourage you today, if you want to quit, like look first there, like where's your heart at? And are you praying? And then get help there first before you go and quit and jump out. Like actually look at some of those things in your own life. And I, I really believe that God's going to help you through that. Amen. One of, I've got about 10 dif um, different definitions to religion, but um one of the ones I love is activity that satisfies the heart into thinking that growth is taking place. And this has been touched on this week, and I know you've already felt challenged around this, and I have too. And I'm preaching this word to myself again this morning because there's, I'm going through the motions in certain areas of my life right now that I need God to just like disrupt me in. But there's a lot of activity, and we've heard about this this week. There's a lot of activity that's taking place, but um, it's satisfying our heart into thinking that we're all good, that we're okay. But it's basically religion. If we're not praying about it, if we're not taking it to God, it's religion. We're going to need to let go of some of our own rituals and rules and our going through the motions to be able to embrace what God is going to bring. 
Now, I'm going to land here in a minute, but as I was studying this uh, passage from Acts 10 and just praying about it, I was like, yeah, God, I, I believe this, that there's going to be a new harvest, like a, you're extending the boundaries, bringing us into new territory. I fully believe this. And I was reading these commentaries, and I was just like sensing like there's something more, like there's something more, God, where you want to land with this. And I'm reading, and about the start of the story, it says this in one of the commentaries I was reading. It said, Peter, weary and hungry from journeying, is on the housetop praying. And that's, that's why I believe this word is for now, that there are pastors and leaders in the room that are weary and hungry from journeying. Peter, he was, he was tired from progress. And someone needs to hear that today. You're tired from progress. You haven't been going around in circles. Peter, he was tired from a journey. So there had been progress. So you're tired because there's been progress. Through COVID, it feels like this massive onslaught. So you're tired from COVID for sure, but it's more than that. There's been a spiritual battle going on. So you're tired from journeying that. You're tired from progress, not from walking in circles, but he was tired from a journey. And I'm guessing that you've had a journey as well. You've had progress, but you're weary and hungry from a journey. But God is turning the soil in church history. That's actually why we're tired and weary. We are not simply weary from leading through a pandemic or leading through whatever we've had to lead through. God is turning the soil in church history, and there's a spiritual battle going on. That's why there's people dropping out. That's why we need to be getting alongside the people alongside us and colleagues and people in ministry and encourage them and say the things that we're thinking and exhort them and spur them on because right now there's a spiritual battle going on and people are wanting to drop out. And so we need to be in their corner um, encouraging them forward and to keep going. The guy who got the revelation that changed Christianity and church history, he was naked on a rooftop. Not naked. I didn't say naked for the international guests, but not sure about my accent. I said naked. <laughs> Just in case you don't know what naked is. He was naked on the rooftop. Byron, don't get it. <laughs> I was honestly like, my husband's going to take this word, and I can see him. We'll go home Friday morning. I can see him with a selfie on the rooftop. Hashtag. <laughs> Hashtag on the rooftop. <laughs> The new generation, not hashtag by the gate, hashtag on the rooftop. <laughs> don't do it, people. I don't want to see it. <laughs> but the guy who got this revelation that changed Christianity, he was <laughs> tired on a rooftop. So don't ignore the fact that you're tired, but you need to bring that to God. You know, weariness is not to be despised, recognized, but not despised. Maybe our weariness is needed to bring us to the end of ourselves and to a history-defining moment. Maybe you feel there's no emotional margin to receive revelation from God. You've been hearing about it this week, about prayer, about seeking God, and you're like, I've got no emotional margin for that. You're at capacity. And the last thing you feel like is getting on the rooftop to pray. And I get it. I've been there. been there plenty of times. But you do... You need it. Like you actually have to lean in right now and it's a time to push in. You've got to hear the word from God this morning that it's a time to push in. It's a time to lean in for it. You need revelation. And when you get revelation, you're going to gain understanding of what it is that God's doing and it's going to be replenishing to you. It's going to give you the win that you need for the next season and for what's up ahead. You really do need revelation. I think this will come on the screen, but revelation is divine guidance or inspiration, and it simply means to uncover something not yet known. Like, we don't know. Like, we actually don't know. Like, what a freeing thing to say today. Like, I don't know, God. I don't know what you're about to do, but I sense something in my spirit that you're about to do something. So, God, I'm going to come before you. I'm going to come to the rooftop, whatever that looks like for you. I'm going to carve out time. I'm going to carve out space. And I'm going to meet with you on the rooftop. And, God, I'm expecting to receive revelation from you. You're going to show me some hidden things that I don't know right now, some things that aren't revealed right now to people around me, to the world. But, God, you're going to reveal them to me, not so that I have to then carry the responsibility of that because the outcomes are with you, but I'm going to carry that in my spirit, like Pastor Banning spoke about this week, that we steward that word as God brings it to us. So you can go back and listen to that word and find out what you need to do next. But firstly, you need to get the revelation. You need to seek God. It's a time to seek Him and to get revelation from Him. And like I said, I had a moment like, oh my gosh, I'm talking to pastors and leaders about this, but we need it. 
and it can feel like a weight, like, oh, Hannah has just said I need to go and seek God and get a word, and we can pick that up like a pressure, but God doesn't want you to pick that up like a pressure today. He wants you just to humbly come before him, to seek him, and he's going to speak. I, I feel like as leaders, we need to get a lot better with being okay with our lack and our weakness. Like, I'll talk about my burnout, and I'll share about that quite freely, not to give glory to it, but to talk about the fact that as leaders, we have, we have our limits. Like, we have the end of ourselves, and that's actually a good thing. Um, the end of yourself is actually the means of leadership. The end of yourself is the means of the gospel. So why do we, like, why do we look at the end of ourselves as, like, a bad thing? The end of ourselves is a good thing. That's the gospel. That's the means of leadership. We have to come to the end of ourselves. I do not know. <laughs> I don't know all things. I am tired. I am weary. I'm at capacity. God, I need you. God, I need fresh revelation. Otherwise, we'll quit. Otherwise, we'll give up before it's time. Otherwise, we'll give in and the enemy wins. And like God is about to do something significant in the earth. Let's not give up. This is not a time to give up. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to pray in a moment, and if the team could come, that would be wonderful. Oh my gosh, Byron, five minutes to go. That never happens for me. It was always like red, 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 Hannah. <laughs> he knows this. <laughs> so we talked about a generation that we need to point to the rooftop to be grappling with the questions that they're asking right now. But what about you? I know you have questions. I have questions. There's things I'm asking of God right now. But are we grappling that with that in the right places? Are we grappling that? in prayer rooftops are designed to take us to new spiritual territory are you like Peter willing to go there and it's critical that the church today facing a whole new reality looks at the world from God's perspective God is redefining the boundaries of the harvest and you are not responsible for the outcomes but there are things you're responsible for if God if you put your hand up and said yes I will lead this church. Yes, I will lead this ministry area. Yes, I will go to Bible college and serve in this season. If you put your hand up and you've said yes to that, then there's a responsibility on you to be seeking God and to know His heart for what it is that you've said yes to. So you are responsible for who you will come to. It must be Him every time. Where and how often you will meet with Him. And the rooftop, I love that in the Holy Land, the rooftop was on their house because how accessible. They didn't have to go to the church or the temple every single day. But it was on their rooftop. It was on their house. It was accessible every single day. They could go there. They could go find this, themselves in this place, this place of retreat to reflect. And it actually says to, to ponder and to, to grapple with the big questions of life and then to pray and to seek revelation from God. Like, where's our rooftops? Like we can't wait for X conference every year, but we've got to be having these moments every single day. I wake up on a Monday morning, and that's, that's often the hardest day after a good or bad Sunday, but it's like, God, what is it this week? Like, yeah, I had revelation for last week, but God, what is it that you're doing today? What is it that you're doing on the earth today? And God, I want to be on board with that. Like, that's an exciting way to live our lives. Like, honestly, to spend our lives and to spend our souls and to spend our time and what God loves and what God is passionate about. And, and He knows more than us what the needs are of even the people back home in our churches right now. God knows. And there's things right now I'm grappling with, like why like we're pushing out in this um, area of emotional mental health in, in our campus, and I know many others as well, um, providing just free counseling hours for people who, um, who need it because there's a whole lot of people right now who are struggling and unless you're at crisis point it's not necessarily accessible for you so we're making it easy for people to access it but how many know that when you push out into something like that then there's a whole wave of a lot of emotional mental health needs and there's a lot of people right now walking through some heavy things and I'm, I'm grappling with stuff like God why like you've called us to this but yet you know there's some people really really struggling but I've got to seek revelation from God. I've got to know, even for individuals, what is it that they need? What's the next step for them? God, help me. Show me your heart towards them so that I can help them in this next season. As we finish, I want to read this verse from Hosea 10, verse 12. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy. And this is what I believe, is break up your fellow ground 
for it is time to seek the Lord. Fellow is a, a fallow field was once ploughed and cultivated, but eventually left to lie dormant for a time. And God's saying to every single one of us, it's time to break up the fallow ground. Yeah, you might have had a fresh revelation in your 20s and your 30s, but where's your fresh revelation today? Maybe you had fresh revelation yesterday, but are you stirring up that fallow ground today? And have you got fresh revelation today for what it is that God wants to do? Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord. The guy who got revelation that changed Christian history was a guy naked on a rooftop, ready to seek the Lord. And I feel like we need to just create a moment this morning. I don't know if that means you need to come forward. Maybe this is the rooftop this morning. We haven't had necessarily you come forward yet. But maybe you need to make a move. We're so good as pastors at creating spaces for others and we encourage them, get out of your seat. There's something about getting out of your seat and deciding that you're gonna do something new and different in this season, that you're hungry for God, that you're desperate for Him. You know, the altar actually in Hebrew, it's, it talks about it's a place of surrender, but it's actually also a place of slaughter. And sometimes we need moments where we're just slaughtered, like before God. And so if you need to this morning, and there's some things that you're like, I need to break that off. I've been going through the motions there. I've got whatever, this weariness that I just need to have broken off. Like come and like just seek God this morning. Break up the fellow ground. It's time to seek the Lord. So let's worship. I want you to all just stand. We're going to worship God. Let's believe that this could be a pivotal moment in church history, that God would drop some dreams and visions, that He would speak something new and fresh in this place this morning. Let's worship Him. Let's you seek the Lord this morning. My Jesus, I make room.